स्वयं प्रभा फ्री डीटीएच चैनल फॉर एजुकेशन See, we want to get f of x y, correct? And how could we get? We realize it that this would be in terms of its Fourier transform. If you look at it, Fourier domain. If you look at it, if that is equal to f of k x comma k y, then what would be this multiplied with e power j times two pi k x times x plus k y times y. d k x d k y correct this is the case so so what we do as a first step here is for example you take change of variable because there in fact you have if you want to make use of fourier slice theorem also you have this for varying values of theta and for each theta for varying values of rho so that's what we change this transformation so that we could exploit the fourier slice theorem so to do that let's say i am taking here kx equal to rho cos theta ky equal to rho sin theta and then this is something you are now quite comfortable with i guess would be equal to dkx dky would be equal to absolute value of rho d rho d theta okay and uh, this f of x y you could now write it as you vary for example i want to vary if i am varying r from minus infinity to plus infinity here across this okay if i am doing that then if i just cover this distance then that's good enough isn't it theta is varying from 0 to 2 pi rho is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity f of kx will be equal to now rho cos theta ky will be equal to rho sin theta e power j times 2 pi times rho into x cos theta plus y sin theta okay and then what here what will you get here absolute value of rho d rho d theta is everyone with me so far is yes, this sir. fine okay good so then from fourier slice theorem we have already seen that if you have for example an object for which i am taking a projection which is taken at an angle theta i have the profile of it this is my f of xy this is x this is y okay this we are calling it as x prime corresponding to this and that angle will be the same thing so this we call it as g theta of x prime and to that the one dimensional ctft we were calling it as capital g theta of rho and this two dimensional ctft of it we were calling it as capital f of kx comma ky right now how are these two related g theta of rho is equal to f, f of, of rho cos theta rho that's it rho cos theta rho sin theta correct this is our fourier slice theorem we have done it enough number of times now right you take that result here now because see all we have is projection so that's why we are writing trying to write everything in terms of those projections so now what do i have here f of x y equal to theta varying from 0 to pi rho varying from minus infinity to plus infinity and let me just write this uh, a bit earlier here absolute value of rho into g theta of rho into e power j 2 pi rho into x cos theta plus pi sin theta d rho okay let me put it in one bunch here and d theta you could see that i could uh, replace this with x prime here okay because hope you remember here this x prime if you look at this is your x prime so x prime will be equal to 
x cos theta plus y sin theta so yeah this this is in fact equivalent to theta equal to 0 to pi rho varying from minus infinity to plus infinity rho into g theta of rho into e power j 2 pi rho x dash d rho right into d theta now what is it equivalent to this one is equivalent to it is the inverse ctft of what rho times g rho mm, this is the ct inverse ctft of this function right now what is it that we have and what is it that we need to compute you have g theta of x dash earlier right that ctft is g theta of rho correct that's what we had earlier itself okay now you ignore absolute of rho for time being okay then what does it mean theta varying from 0 to pi can i write here g theta of x dash then so if this is not there okay this expression is equivalent to finding out g theta of x prime so what is happening here what you are doing here is you are varying theta value that means this projection angles you are varying it and then you are summing up all projections together and that is what is giving you f of x y for a moment you ignore this part and now come back and take the original one now what is it equivalent to multiplying it with magnitude of rho you have a function g theta of rho is there this I am multiplying with rho. What is it equivalent to? What is this operation equal to? Which kind of filter is this? Low pass. Are you sure? Mm. What do you mean by low pass filter? What it should do? Can you draw the how it looks like? Does it not look something like this? Magnitude of rho. How would you decide whether what kind of filter is this? Yeah, you in practice you put a cutoff here, so you could think after that you make it zero, but this is equal into high pass filter. So here you are multiplying here, which should be equivalent to in the time domain. If you look at this, is equivalent to convolving your gt of x dash. Okay, let me call this function as let's say h of rho with h of x dash so whichever is the inverse fourier transform of this function let's call it as h of x dash so if i am going to convolve my so this what i have inside here this function is equivalent to f of x comma y is equal to theta is varying from 0 to pi h of x dash okay convolving with g theta of x dash d theta is that fine can we interpret as uh, like when we take differentiation in uh, uh, differentiation in time domain we get this row factor i think in the frequency domain yeah that is also correct very good that's also a high pass filter yeah so the differentiation is basically taking gradient right right correct so, so that's a high pass filter See, just yeah, look so, at this way. See, as you are increasing rho, for higher values of rho, the gain is more, right? For low values, the gain is less. Okay, then let's try to get some interpretation for this. Let's write g equal to g theta is varying from 0 to 2 pi x cos theta plus y sin theta. Because one confusion you might be having is on one, on one side, I am talking about x comma y here. And on another side, I'm talking about X dash. That could be something which is making it slightly difficult. So let us look at it in this way now. So this is what we are doing. F of X comma Y. This is what is there. Very carefully pay attention here. Suppose X cos theta plus Y sin theta is equal to some constant R. We assume that x cos theta plus y sin theta is the parameter that you have inside suppose any set of x comma y okay for a given theta assume that i am taking for a particular theta what will be the set of 
x y points for which x cos theta plus y sin theta is constant see for a given x cos theta plus y sin theta this whole value inside this integral is constant is it not now what would be the locus of all points x and y for which x cos theta plus y sin theta is equal to let's say the constant is r can you tell me that so theta is also constant uh, yeah for a given theta see what i would see. like to see now is i am varying here x comma y i will take a particular value of theta okay so cos theta sin theta i know there for that theta now what i would like to know is what is the locus of all points of x and y for which let's say x cos theta plus y sin theta equal to r r is a constant okay theta is a constant now i would like to look at all points of x and y where will be all those points can there be multiple points for which this could equation could be satisfied straight line right can you tell where that straight line would be very good that's a straight line have you ever seen this guy earlier particularly those who have done a computer vision course r equal to x cos theta plus y sin theta half transform half transform very good very good correct what is r here distance from origin correct what is theta here angle correct so those of you who have not done um, this course don't worry you first write a simple equation of a line where you call this as x intercept is a y intercept is b if i give you those two how do you write the equation of a line i give you x intercept and y intercept how do you write the equation of a line x by a plus y by b equal to c correct now i would like to get the a and b values okay i know this is r this is theta so first you take here for example cos theta all i want to do is now express a and b in terms of theta and r okay that's what i would like to do now so cos theta equal to adjacent so this is 90 degrees by the way and this is 90 degrees so cos theta adjacent line is r by diagonal is a that implies my a equal to r by cos theta and similarly if i take sin theta let me take here so this is sin theta opposite side is this that is r and diagonal is b right so that implies what you would get here x a x by r by cos theta so x cos theta by r plus y sin theta by r equal to 1 that implies r equal to x cos theta plus y sin theta again pay attention carefully here i have an object i took a projection of it i got a profile here this is my x dash this is my theta what it is going to do now here while you are integrating from 0 to 2 pi for all f of xy for a given f of xy whichever value is here you give that value to all these points in the xy plane here they all will have same value here so let us call this whole function inside as b theta theta equal to let me write it as f of x comma y equal to theta is varying from 0 to 2 pi let me call after the convolution what i am getting there as b theta of xy or b theta of x cos theta plus y sin theta okay d theta okay so this part let me i am just calling it with b theta of xy okay so what is happening here is when you are, are computing for f of xy for various values in the projection whatever you have here that same will be it is called as smearing you give the same value to all f of xy which are there this being r and this being theta is that clear to everyone for a given theta okay so you take that and then you vary this r value here and all these xy points at the end of this integration okay you forget about this integration just you look at this 
okay forget it. just a given theta value that means one projection for a given theta means for a given projection how do you get f of xy values you just need to propagate those points back that would give you if you ignore this integration that would give you these points do you agree with that see you got this equation which is in terms of x cos theta plus y sin theta okay this is the only variable here for a given theta we figured out that all x f of x comma y which are there on this line would get the same value all i am now trying to see is okay instead of the, i assume that this is also g theta of x dash convolved with uh, h theta of x dash i did okay h of x dash whatever it is i did already this and then this is my b theta of x dash i have it to find out see we have projections and we want to find out f of xy the interpretation we could see here is this is equivalent to where will all these points are there that's what we figured out that is there at an angle theta here and for varying values of r this would be for example varying that will be equivalent to distance this is distance is r here as you move on here for each value of r you just to propagate them these values here that's what you would be assigning for a given value of theta whichever is there here let's say to give it to all points which are there on this xy plane here is this uh, interpretation clear yes sir actually uh, so i have a doubt like yes. uh, what we do is we sum uh, all of these like we swipe we are sweeping this line uh, for varying values of theta first right right then we change theta and then we again swipe so exactly. all these values get added to generate original f of x right correct right. that that's yes. right that's all that is going to happen here so that is hopefully now mm -hmm. the name also should make clear here this is a projection okay what you have here are projections and then you are back projecting them here and second thing you are convolving it with a high pass filter also so that's why they call it as convolution back projection this is one name for this you are doing filtering so instead of calling it as convolution they will also call it as filtered back projection okay so what you are doing you have an object you take different projections here let's say in this way in this way okay you got one profile here you got one profile here and again i'm not drawing multiple but you vary it uh, in multiple directions theta from 0 to pi for each projection for this f of x y you whatever value is there you go each projection wise you you smear those values here that's what the word they use it or they you back project the values here and when it comes suppose if you have here a value of this so this plus this this plus this everything gets added there say for example if you want me to put some value here let's say once you projected here okay you have let's say 1 2 3 here another projection here might have given you 4 5 6 here what will you do first as a first step you put here when you back project this that would give you 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay that's this one now you do this one now so that means you are going to do it as 4 5 6 what would be the result of it so add 4 everywhere here so 5 6 7 5 here okay 6 7 8 okay 6 here 7 8 9 and of course you will have projections in angles also let's say this is how you have another projection here let's say yeah i should be drawing it here okay that you take it here and you might be having a result here for the same so let me put 1 2 3 4 5 itself so you do this projection now so then what would happen this is 1 so that would take a value of 6 here then this is 2 so this will go 2 means 8 and 8 this is 3 so 3 is this so 10 10 10 and then this is 4 let's say 12 12 and 5 9 plus 5 14 so this is i am giving you a discretized version of it okay there's this, some normalization you have to do to so normalization i have not taken into account but i am just trying to explain what the summation uh, operation would mean is that clear 
any questions so far this is the uh, and again this is convolution you are nothing you are doing in the fourier domain as such see the earlier why we moved there is if you are taking just the fourier slice theorem you have like uh, the samples like this okay for varying values of projections then you had to at higher values of r you have very less, less samples and to get on a rectangular grid it is causing you problems right that's why here if you look at it we dealt it in such a way that this interpolation is not at all required by back projecting your projections right and before you project you are convolving it with a high pass filter as well so then there are still few more issues to be sorted out how do you discretize this one okay so well uh, it is equivalent to what you do you take m samples of it okay so then you have then you do normalize it by pi by m okay this is a very conventional thing you do and uh, it should be quite straight forward so what you let me if you want i would just quickly write it here so g theta of x dash you have it from 0 to pi okay and uh, you have some b theta of let's say some x y d theta you have it now you are taking this projections only at let's say regular at theta equal to 0 okay and then uh, maybe you are taking n project some m projections you are taking okay um, if you are taking m projections the distance between each projection is pi by m okay the whole thing integral this integral should give you the same thing as you are varying your you are taking m projections and if you are taking m projections this is equal to pi by capital m into m okay that is your theta value of xy that's how you are writing it so now each one is pi by m so you need to get kind of the whole thing should be pi so you would multiply it like pi by m so that's what would happen here pi by m into 0 to m minus 1 b of pi by m into m of xy when you are taking limited number of projections this is your h of rho okay either you could take the ctft of it because this is anyway also is rho so there is no this is also the h of rho only this also function uh, on the spatial domain is rho here g of rho right so you get it as a, so what you could do is you take this into fourier domain okay multiply it and then come back to the spatial domain that can be done or else everything can be done in the spatial domain itself provided you just find out the uh, using convolution by just simply computing the fourier transform for it so this is pretty simple this is the function you have how could you write this out there is a rect function if you take it minus this triangular function if you do it you will get this out right so rect function you know uh, for example uh, in the frequency domain if you have a how could you assume that i am putting a cut off of plus or minus rho c here as my lower and uh, upper uh, thresholds for frequency beyond which i would make it to zero now my rect function here would be equivalent to rect of rho by rho c here is it not this one so minus rho c to plus rho c okay hope you all remember the rect function it is by default it is there from minus 1 by 2 to plus 1 by 2 since it is there from minus rho t rho c to plus rho c you will get my rect of rho by 2 rho c here okay and then this is the triangular function you need this how could you write this this you can write it as convolution of two rect functions but now just the difference would be this would be instead of minus rho c when i am convolving it it would go if i am taking this it will go from minus 2 rho c to plus 2 rho c right convolving this so i am making those limits to minus rho c by 2 to plus rho c by 2 here and then so this is equivalent to convolution of these two uh, then how could i write that so my h of rho equal to in the frequency domain uh, the magnitude i have is rho c so rho time rho subscript c into rect of rho by 2c minus so rho c into rect convolved with rect so that's equivalent to sink multiplied with sink in the um, spatial domain so this is what i would be getting as h of x dash okay yeah then coming back 
this is the summary of the algorithm what you are going to do compute gt of x dash for each projection of the object right you are taking so this will give you the projection then that projection you convolve with this thing h of x dash right then you back project the this is called as filtered projection now because you are applying this filter now convolving with this filter so you now back project the filtered projection by computing okay uh, f of xy equal to this one that's all that would give you f of xy sir hello uh, yes tell me uh, sir uh, we have the uh, fourier transform of projection so from that we are getting the original original uh, function no 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 we are not at all going into the fourier domain that's the beauty here see all you have is gt of x dash here which is all you have here is see this is all you have gt of x dash is you are taking a projection at an angle of uh, theta okay with respect to the sensor that is all you are doing you are not at all going into gt of you are avoiding purposefully computation of this g theta of rho here in a way or this you could compute if you want but this interpolation is what we wanted to avoid without going into the fourier domain itself you could do everything here this is just g theta of x prime that's all this g theta of x dash then you convolve it with h of x dash and back project it yes sir yes so what we discussed so far is your projection is in this manner where all rays are coming parallelly right and then at an angle theta all of them are coming theta that's not the only way you have projections and for example if you are looking at a 2d case this is called as a fan beam it's like yeah th this would be all the rays would be coming in this manner here okay this again we are not going to work but you need to just come up with a method there you, you have in the literature now what if you have a fan beam how do you reconstruct back and even more common particularly in your ct scans right now if you see in most of the ct scans what you have is a cone beam cone beam is nothing but your fan detector extended to 3d kind of it will take you along this as well there is a, yeah it, it it's like the kind of rays you are coming from your source are like a cone and then also you could come up then this this apply, this if you want to exactly apply this you always require beam that is parallel then you have we are not going to work out but you could extend this work this far serves as the basis i think if you understand uh, convolution back projection you could do the rest uh, quite comfortably another interesting detail i, I come across uh, while uh, yeah preparing for this is this work in fact all this thing is done by um, uh, our indian uh, uh, scientists indian faculty from indian institute of science gn ramchandran his name is and uh, this work has been done in 1971 so this got published in proceedings of national academy of science so the, he is the guy gopal samudran narayanan ramchandran he is a student of uh, cv raman he worked in biology also in fact and he has been nominated for nobel prize in fact he has worked in biology also for his fundamental contributions to protein structure he has done he has he is quite interdisciplinary so he did in physics and then he has moved to that he had worked as a he faculty also in iisc bangalore and he did his masters and phd in iisc and then he moved for some time into madras university and later he came back so this is a very interesting he has uh, built his own uh, thing they to study the biological structures or something like that you know, x ray diffraction and all i think he worked with uh, sir cv raman Mm, he is a student of him and then this is what he did in 1971 but again independently in a completely different uh, so they were not aware of each other's work it's not like google you don't have it this is again uh, um, astrophysics in a completely different context of uh, fan beam scans in radio astronomy okay so bracewell and riddell they have done it this is a completely independent uh, works this happened in fact 3 4 years earlier itself 1967 bracewell and riddell okay these guys have also come up with this formulation where they avoid doing things 
in the Fourier domain, but would which was earlier causing you some kind of blurring effect by doing this back propagation and filtering in the spatial domain. So it's all right if we don't understand it in the first go. This is not a such a simple thing that has happened just like that. Okay, there is a lot of uh, uh, things that are there to for them to see this. Okay, that's just the detail. I, I found it interesting, so just wanted to share with you. Okay, so that's all.